three. Yes, we can start. Yes. So um, last I was speaking about uh, the house groups and whatnot, and uh, and and really that's that's basic. You have to sort that out. Okay. Um, you have to learn that and uh, make adjustments so that you know each house and the dilemmas of each house and the individualities of each house and things like that. We even use those groups that I mentioned for matching charts, like matching people's love and lagnation with each other. Very important for marriage matching. Okay. Um, Lagna is very important. Now, what I want to bring forth now at this stage is the Navamsha Lagna's importance. The Lagna of Avarga shows our nature in that aspect of life. What's happening is that you are the Rashi Lagna, but because of the Amshas, you are changing. All right? It's like the outside world telling you don't be yourself anymore. Okay? This is not nice. It's actually Grahana. It's the true power of Grahana to eclipse the mind and change it and say you are not what you thought you were. Mm -hmm. Your true self is in the Rashi chart. Now, whether that means we're looking at Lagna to see your true intelligence, your own intelligence, your own ideology and views. All right, more views, ideologies, nine cows, but that's your own. Rashi is your own. Okay. Now, uh, but um, so that is who your, what your true character is. And, but that is changing because of the divisional charts. And the most profound change comes from the Navamsha, right? Because some spouses don't ac accept that you are whom you say you are. <laughs> Right? They want to change you. And um, the Navamsha Lagna is showing how this nature is changing. Now, this may not happen immediately. This, this requires the Navamsha to be activated. So the traits of the Navamsha Lagna will not come forth to begin with in life, but they need the Navamsha to be activated. This Navamsha is whom you are around people whom you are close to. You are like this around the people who are closest to you, who know you best. You, you behave like me, Navam Shalagna, and especially your spouse. So what can happen is that, the, that to understand whom you truly are, we need to examine Navamsha. All right? So the Navamsha is seen for Dharma and marriage, hence one's nature in both matters will be indicated by the Navam Shalagna. This is the inner true nature and description of the individual in intimate company. Okay, in close company. For example, even the most cruel Scorpio Lagna and Rashi chart will be a compassionate and considerate person if Navamsha Lagna is Taurus or Cancer. So if you're going to describe a person whom they are, you know, Amsha might be of value to you because that is what's really inside the person. Okay, when it comes to interaction with, other, uh, with their closest people around them, their close family around them. Now, here's the dilemma, though. After some time, your Navamsha Lagna starts replacing the Rashi chart. And this is whether you marry or not. It'll start replacing it. Okay? You grew up as one thing, and you changed. That change is coming from the Navamsha. And when that change happens, you will stay like that for the rest of your life. So Navamsha Lagna is so powerful, it can dominate over the Rashi chart. But it doesn't do so from birth. That trait has always been there, that Navam Shalagna, from birth. And with time, it completely dominated over it. This can be a good thing. All right? Yes. Uh, why did this... I think we have talked about this, right? This, this, this is just a repeat. Okay. Slide. Yes. One question I wanted to ask you. Uh, here you said that it completely will dominate once in your life, and then you will not change. So... Uh, how do you say that when that happens or do you again take into that activation years or is there any other theory to find that? The best is to take the activation years. Okay. But in this context, I'm more interested in the age of the Navamsha Lagna. Okay. So for example, let's take the chart of Hitler whom I have on screen now. All right. So Hitler has Lagna as Tula, Libra. So Libra is ascended is known to be very concerned about relationships, liberal, good to guests, liberal. If you're liberal, why would you think that a part of the population is bad, right? Good to guests, guests are people who are entering your country. If your king or your president, if your chancellor likes guests, they will say, please, oh, all the guests are welcome to my country. Immigrants, people from other cultures, right? 
they're good to guests, gods and Brahmins. So why would he start? Uh, he, he did not like the church. He had a problem with the church. Okay, but fond of promoting quarrels. Okay, so now we can say this is a little bit of Hitler there, right? Such a person will be very kind in, int uh, in intimate matters as the Lagnesha is Venus. It should say intimate matters there. Because whatever is your Lagnesh, you consider that the best. So this person should be very good to spouse. Okay? Yet there's a suspicion that his lover, lovers suffered or died at his hand. Okay? The only one who stayed with him, Eva Brown, ended up dying next to him. He doesn't have a very good uh, track record when it comes to relationships. A few of his partners jumped out of a window and died. Okay? During their relationship. So... How do we say that he has Venus as his Lagnesh? Right? Or Tula as his Lagna? How can we justify it? From the Rashi chart, just by knowing that he's Tula Lagna, this may not be appropriate. Some will argue there is something going on between Venus and Mars in his form. That's appropriate to say. But let me entertain the Navamsha Lagna for a minute. Look at this Navamsha Lagna. Oh my goodness. He has Vrishika Lagna. His true nature is Vrishika. Wherever Vrishika is in the Navamsha is where you see cruelty in life. Wherever Vrishika is, the, is, the, is there in Navamsha. We have two signs which are the worst in this chart. Vrishika, Scorpio, and Aquarius. Scorpio is where you see cruelty. Aquarius is where you see loss. Can you, can you repeat, if you don't mind, wherever these two signs are there in the Navamsha, in that area we, we see cruelty. Exactly. And in Aquarius, we see loss. It just vacuum disappears from our life. Okay. All so right? this is worst if they are in the Lagna of the Navamsha itself. No. If it's in Lagna, it means you are like that. Okay. So it's like saying you are only a cause of that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So in this person's chart, Venus is in Scorpio Navamsha. We'll see cruelty from or towards women. Because okay. Rishika is the Lagna, he is cruel towards women. Ah, okay. The okay? Had it not been Lagna, he would not be cruel towards women. Okay, suppose he was a Libra Lagna here, for example, and then Venus... Then he would be cruel. Because Lagna should be in Scorpio. Oh, okay, okay. even then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And they could be for different reasons, you know? Like somebody, like there are many people who see one trauma in their life and then they start doing that to other people. Yes, yeah, so sometimes people may have this question that suppose for that person, uh, Scorpio falls in the fourth house, for example, and there's no planet in the Navam Shami. So then uh, does it mean that they will see suffering related to the mother? Because you said that fourth house in the Navam Shai is not related to mother. Um, uh, if moon is in Scorpio, then they see suffering related to mother. Okay, you need the Karaka to support that, that prediction. I'm right? saying, I'm saying, if Scorpio and Aquarius, yes. is, like for example, in his yes. so Scorpio is in fourth house, it doesn't mean there's cruelty towards mother. Oh. They don't see cruelty towards mother. Okay. But if Moon is in Scorpio, they do see cruelty towards mother, regardless of which house Scorpio is. Okay, that's what I wanted. To Thank you. So we're interested in planetary Karakatwa here. All right. Yes. So, so this, so now we understand Hitler a little bit better, right? Okay. So now the question was, would this person be a warmonger? Mars in Lagna with Ketu? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And this becomes stronger with time in his life. Now, which time? Look at the planets in this chart, in the Lagna. Venus is there. So from the age of 25, 26, he starts behaving like this. Okay. Mars is there, 27, 28, it gets very pronounced in his life. All right. Ketu is there, 39, 40, done. From then on, he's like that. So when is he 40? Around uh, 1929. Okay. That's when his Lagna has fully risen in Navamsha. Okay. Now he has become Brishika from that age. Fully risen. Okay. So, that's what we're seeing here. So, because Ketu gets activated at the last, so you are taking that Ketu's time, he'll be fully activated. Correct. Fully yeah. activated. Okay. 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 Now we've done a bit, small bits, Snamam Shalagam. We could spend the whole day just on that.
I have to teach something new also, right? Yes, so we're getting into something very practical. Because that now what I showed you, it looks a bit scary, right? Oh no, we'll see who's bad person, who's good person. Truthfully, this is what we do. You can see who's good or bad, whose true nature is that. All right? Yeah, what is your true nature? Before you start on this, uh, you didn't speak much on Aquarius. So you showed for Scorpio. Can you just say about So that? Aquarius is where loss is happening. It's like a vacuum. All right? And they, we consider this worse than Scorpio. Because it is, a, it, it, Scorpio is interested in torture, all right? Scorpio is interested in torture. They like torture. But uh, Aquarius accepts the idea that things can die. And so these are killers, all right? Now, it doesn't mean that somebody with Kumbha Lagna is a killer. Please don't say that to anybody, all right? It doesn't mean that. Nor in Navamsha does it mean that. But what you are seeing is, is that if, the, if any planet is in Aquarius in Navamsha, the person is likely going to be bereft of that in life. All right? If Venus is in Aquarius in Navamsha, the person has seen part, uh, uh, their marriage go. Okay? It could mean either spouse has died or somehow marriage has just ended and, or a relationship ended, which was very unfortunate for them. Okay? So when you read... Uh, Aquarius, understand there's this huge vacuum and the person is missing that person who was in, which was indicated by the planet there. If Lagna is there, then in, in what, is, what can happen is, is that the person is, uh, what we say, um, leaving other people, going away from other people, separating from other people, all right? And they could be very lonely because of this. So what happens is, is that if there's an Aquarius problem, you advise the person to worship Shiva. If there's a Scorpio problem, you advise the person to worship Vishnu. And these are the solutions for these two signs to get over that situation. Okay? To really do justice to this, we need to learn about bhavas, though. Then it becomes very interesting. Scorpio and Aquarius can show very bad people also. But that can, you need to know how to see first. All right? Because it's not the Lagna which is the only decider in that. All right? Okay. So we need to learn some more houses. Um, Trikona, we'll start with. Okay, it's good to learn house groups first. So, what's this now? The Trikona in Navamsha give knowledge. Okay. Um, the first house being a Kendra and Kona gives both wealth and knowledge. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's a hint here. We'll use Kendra for wealth later. Any planets in trines to the D9 Lagna show that that person's skills. Planets in trines to the 10th house can show capabilities, but not knowledge. Like you could be capable of something, but not knowledgeable about something. Neither of these may be professionally applied. That depends on Rashi and Dashamsha. So, for example, um, if Ketu is in trines to Navamsha Lagna, we say the person is very good at math. Okay? If that Ketu is linked to Rashi Lagna, the person actually wants to be a mathematician by profession. Only Lagna or the D or the 10th house of the Lagna? In, in lagna is self-identity, right? Okay. What you work with and what you are are two different things, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. And how you work is also different. So, so when I say Rashi chart, I'm actually interested in the Lagna, definition of self. Who am I? Oh, okay. Who am I? Yes. Okay. So that, that, you see, who you are defines your title. Nah, see, small, small things people don't think about when it comes to, to professions, for example. Okay. Now, um, let's, let's move into this and understand the planets. Planets and skills. 